Hey guys, what's up? This is Jordan Crook, and I'm here with the CEO and founder of Voxy, Paul Gollish. Hello. Hey, what's up, Jordan? Nothing much. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, so you guys were a Disrupt finalist in 2010, right? Yeah, that's right. Is that correct? It's in New York or San Francisco? Uh, in San Francisco, actually. Oh, right, so we're like coming up on two years yeah, exactly. exactly. That's awesome. Um, so I guess, I mean, I told you this earlier, but we do kind of like a Where Are They Now series where yeah. we look at people who have launched a Disrupt and kind of see how far they've come and, and what they're up to. Cool. So I guess why don't you just paint a picture for us in terms of the launch to now in two years. What are some of the milestones that you've hit? Uh, well, it's been a, uh, an exciting couple of years. Um, we launched our first version of the product actually on stage at uh, TechCrunch Disrupt in the yeah, end of 2010. Um, and since then, you know, we've went from zero users to almost two million, um, wow. tens of thousands of paying customers. We've raised uh, three subsequent rounds of funding uh, for a total of $8 million. Uh, and yeah, and basically the genesis of all of it was, uh, was TechCrunch Disrupt. So what do you think it's like to launch on a stage? Because I think it's very different to see a launch come through a press release and actually see someone up on stage launch a product or a company. Um, what did you feel like was the difference? And do you think it made a difference in kind of the outcome now? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that <coughs> coming out of the gates sort of strong with, a, with some sort of PR muscle behind you is really important for any tech product. Um, and yeah, TechCrunch Disrupt is a perfect place um, to sort of start to, to build awareness for your company and for your brand. Um, I, uh, we, actually, we have a, a launch coming up right now. Um, I'm not going to do it on stage, obviously. So yeah, I can tell you that it is, it's a very different uh, experience. Uh, I think the, the amount of press attention that something like TechCrunch Disrupt uh, gives you uh, is pretty much unparalleled, um, and you know the, the sort of the connections that you make in the wake of that event uh, are, are pretty impressive. So. But it can be difficult for some people. I mean, I know that I've seen a few people get up on stage, and kind of their their demo isn't quite where it needs to be, or yeah. they they kind of tank the performance aspect of it because it is a show just as yeah. much as it is a conference. Um, do you think that that kind of poses problems for? for startups, maybe puts them at a disadvantage if they don't really nail that? Because, I mean, you were a finalist. You know what it's like to succeed yeah. at Disrupt. Yeah. What do you I, think about the f failures? I mean, uh, I mean, I think that, uh, well, one thing I'll say is that you guys do a really good job of prepping companies. So I felt like I was, you know, with the dry runs and, and the support that I had from, from your team, I thought that we were pretty prepared. Um, and yeah, it went, it went well for us, thankfully. Um, but, you know, I look back at the product that we launched with and, and it was clearly immature. It mm -hmm. was, you know, it was more than vaporware, but not really like a, a full functioning, you know, killer app. Um, and it, it was still a really positive thing for us. One of the differences that, that we had probably from some of the other companies is um, the tech community wasn't really our target market. We were um, launching a product to teach English to people in, um, the, in developing countries. Right. So our, our sort of core audience wasn't watching. Um, but you know, a lot of people in the investment community and in um, the education community were, and it was, it, was, it was really helpful for us. Yeah, speaking of investors, because I know that's a big reason why a lot of companies choose to go through Disrupt, is it's almost like a surefire thing in terms of at least talking yeah. to investors. Yeah. Um, how do you feel the Disrupt launch kind of affected your investor relations? Uh, I think it, I mean, in, in, a, in a very positive way, Obviously, um, and, it, and it it gives you sort of some momentum to go into these these conversations with, um, and it it, uh, it doesn't really get you funded, um, mm -hmm. but it just opens the door, and, and you sort of have a, a little bit of um, you know sort of social proof that that it was a, a concept and a team that was you know considered valuable enough to, to get on stage at Disrupt and, and to compete effectively with the other other companies. Um, so yeah, it, I mean, my first round of funding was from a number of angels that really weren't in the tech community. Mm -hmm. um, and the second round, which I did about two months after Disrupt, was from you know, an institutional investor here in New York, the uh, FF Venture. Cool. And, uh, and I, mean, I think that the connection to, to Disrupt was, was pretty clear. Cool. So what were some of the biggest challenges, I, I guess, between launch time and now? I mean, what kind of obstacles have you faced, and, and how have you gone around them or through them, I guess? Um, I mean, I think the first couple of years of a startup are nothing but challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say the <laughs> biggest, um, it's probably around people. It's about getting the right people in place um, and prioritizing correctly and, you know, choosing, you know, everything from product features to, you know, uh, you know different markets to attack. Um, and you know, like I said, getting back to the talent as well, like just finding the right people um, and keeping everybody motivated and, and sort of focused on the right thing. 
So tell me a little bit about this new launch. It was just a couple days ago, right? Yeah. What's um, it look like? What are the differences, new features, whatever? Uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, you know, the, the product that we launched on stage at, at TechCrunch Disrupt was clearly V1. And our V2 product, which came out about five, six months after, um, you really hit the market square on. And, and we've had the number one rated education app um, in about 20 countries around the world for most of the last year and a half. Yeah. Um, and the release that we launched a couple days ago um, is really exciting. We ex expanded um, the, the, the content from which we can teach English to include music. So now we have a, the new app can scan your iTunes, find songs that we think are pedagogically valuable, mm -hmm. and can actually teach you English from your favorite music, um, which uh, is really hit the market. Um, our users love it, which is great. The other thing that we added was assessments. So we now have um, sort of a, a, the ability to give you an arbitrary, uh, a very objective measurement of your actual language proficiency, and that was cool. also something really helpful. We also did a complete rebrand, uh, which uh, which you should check out. We we love. Okay, awesome. Um, and so I guess the final question is, what kind of advice would you give to the startups that are coming into this way? We've got to disrupt like right around the corner, yeah. just a couple weeks. Um, so what would you tell them when they go up to launch on stage, or even if they're just in the alley? Um, I would say preparation is, is is a huge part of it. That's that's a big piece of advice. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit daunting launching in front of that. You know, it's a massive room with with what a thousand people or something like that. A little more than that. A little yeah. more than that. Um, so definitely be prepared because it's it's, it's going to be daunting. Um, and you know, make sure your your tech demo is as good as you can. I mean, it's it's difficult for everybody to get a seamless demo of a of a high tech knowledge product, but uh, but it's really important. So. Um, get your whole team rallied around, um, you know, making sure that the feature set that you're launching with um, is as tight as can be, and that and, and that is obviously working uh, when you're on stage. Absolutely. All right, Paul. Well, thank you so much for coming thank and you. talking to us. I really appreciate it. No, thanks. I enjoyed it. All right, guys. That's it for Paul Golish and Boxy.